Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about trying to help out our bandsaw blade do the best work we can get it to do. If you are only going to have one power tool in your shop, there's a pretty good argument for the bandsaw being that power tool. Uh, incredibly versatile machine. I'm sure many of you have one that you're uh, fond of. The kind that most, um, most of us start out with at least is a 14 inch saw made by Delta or um, some other company that copied a Delta machine. And before I get started, let me just say that I would highly suggest that, that you, you call this place and they don't have a website, um, so you've got to you know, use their phone number and order a free catalog. I believe they're free still. Um, and this, as you can see, is a book um, that, that just shows really more than you could ever need to know about these bandsaws. They, they have product comparisons, there's all kinds of uh, blades available, they've got product upgrades for springs and uh, oh, just every, everything. Um, it's just an awesome, it's an awesome catalog, old fashioned, but really, really well done. And um, hey, decals. And uh, you can get any of the parts, blades uh, that you need, and it'll help you understand how a bandsaw works, more importantly. Um, they also have developed their own blade tension guide, which is a really good idea. You don't need it for general shop work, but for resawing, it's almost a necessity to get the, make sure you have the blade at the right tension so it can do the best work that it can do. Anyway, a Tura design, a plug for them. Um, just because they're great. And uh, so here we are uh, looking at the bandsaw in cross section here. So this is the back of the saw, which typically runs against either a dead block uh, of, of material, could be a ceramic block, or sometimes it runs, um, as it does on the delta saw, on the periphery of a bearing. So there's a bearing with a uh, spindle over here or over there and the back of the blade touches the periphery side of the bearing so that uh, to, to stop the, or take the forces uh, induced in this direction when you're cutting a piece of wood. So what we're gonna do after we get the blade on the saw and it's running properly and it's tracked and at tension, we're gonna take a couple of tiny, tiny little cuts on it. And I emphasize these are tiny cuts so first of all, we're going to want to cut off these corners. They don't help us. Uh, we need to cut, take a tiny cut on the corners. And in fact, it's not bad practice to try and induce a tiny rounded shape to the back of the blade. And this does, um, this helps it where it's touching whatever support, whether it's a, a dead piece of material, just a chunk of something or other. Um, or this the periphery of this bearing that's, uh, that's, that's held in the saw. So we're going to ease the back of this uh, shape and take the corners off. And then we're going to also, um, with these sharpening stones, we're, we're going to gently touch the blade here um, to try and remove any problem that might be there due to the weld. Now the weld, I know you won't be able to see this very well, but they've got a, they've got to weld the blade here, or you can silver solder it if you're good. But anyway, um, most of them are welded. And as you can see, it's not perfect. Uh, there's little misalignments. Hopefully it's not misaligned on the back. And hopefully when it's down flat on the surface, um, it's, you can see that it's straight, and this one's pretty good. This is a pretty good weld, and it even, even the spacing of the teeth is pretty good where they welded it. So it still can benefit by getting just a little bit of massage with the stones on the side of it so that if there's any little problem with the weld, you can kind of minimize it. And then finally, and maybe most importantly, you're going to take the stone, we'll take the stone, touch the back of the blade here, 
and very, very carefully move the stone over uh, like this in order to just barely get a couple of sparks off these teeth. And what that'll do, we're not trying to, we're not trying to reduce the set of the blade. And if you don't know, um, the difference between where the blade is uh, cutting here and the, and the body of the blade is called set. A bandsaw can't cut without set. So we're going to use the stone here and on the other side, of course. And what, what we're going to attempt to do is to uh, cut off any wild teeth. In other words, there's so many teeth here. Um, the set is accomplished on this blade by bending the material from one set, from the uh, alternately back and forth. Every other tooth is set a different direction, uh, left and right. And so sometimes you'll get a tooth that, that maybe comes out a little bit farther because of uh, manufacturing inaccuracy. And so what we're going to try and do is just nick those off. Um, in other words, we want to just barely touch all the teeth or maybe not quite touch all the teeth. So again, this is a, a delicate maneuver. Uh, we're taking off almost no material, but um, it will markedly improve the quality of the cut. Now, the whole reason for trying to maximize the potential of the blade to cut perfectly is that if you're going to cut with a bandsaw, you might as well attempt perfection. Uh, it saves a huge amount of time and cleanup and fussing afterwards. And if you can nail it and split your line on the first pass, you're a lot, you're way ahead. It really, really helps to be able to saw accurately. And in, uh, in another riff, we'll talk about some tricks and techniques to help you uh, cut curved lines, which are so important to us as, as instrument builders, uh, fairly. And then also to cut straight lines accurately. And also we're going to look into resawing. So those will be separate lessons. But for today, this is what we're going to do is basically chewing up the blade. Here's a quarter inch blade that's uh, 6.3 millimeters. These are kind of sh common shop size blades. It's a sort of a one size fits all for most things. Um, too small for resawing, but just about right for most everything else. So we're going to move over to the bandsaw with these stones and see what we can do. So here is uh, one of, one of uh, our bandsaws here at the shop. This is an, an older Delta saw in, in restored condition. And um, if I needed another one of these saws, I would probably try and find a used one that was reconditioned rather than a new one. And um, if you get, acquire and read the Etura catalog I was just describing, you will understand why that might be better. The older saws are better quality, have better parts, and um, some better design. Here's the, the table is set square to the blade. We've got a fresh blade on here, and it's up to tension. So, and then we also have the, the guides are adjusted properly, so it runs fine. Uh, here's the back bearing we were speaking of before, so there it is, the blade up against it, and a little clearance when it's just uh, idling in the saw. All right, so first thing we're going to do is, oh, uh, these are <laughs> just, I mean, any old sharpening stones. These are uh, oil stones. Here's a combination stone with two, you know, fine and a coarse grit. These are, you get these at the hardware store, nothing fancy. You don't need a part number, just any old, any old stone will do. Um, so first thing we're gonna we're gonna uh, run the saw and uh, try and kiss a little bit of material off the back of the blade, and then we're gonna we're gonna uh, move the stone like this, and finally we'll just make sure that we've got that we haven't induced a burr, and we're gonna make make the corner go away. Okay. Uh, next, we're gonna take 
two of the stones and carefully without hitting the teeth we're going to go in here and just gently push on this and that'll clean up any little bumps on the weld if they're not too big okay and I, I don't want to uh, suggest that you can do a lot of material removal with these stones on, on, on this job but 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 maybe we can help the weld a little bit by taking the um, some if not all of the little bump out at the weld and then finally most delicate thing we're going to uh, set the the stone down at the back of the blade and then very slowly watching carefully up here for sparks we're going to move the stone until we just see a few sparks um, on, on, on each side and and that will address this concern about uh, wild teeth um, being a problem and making scratches in your work okay a word about safety i know some of you might think this little this looks alarming it, it's not it's safe the great thing about a bandsaw is that um, all the cutting forces are directed downward towards the table and um, if you keep your hands out of the blade it's a safe tool and um, safety first we're going to keep our hands out of the blade all right so here goes Okay, we'll take a look here, see how it feels, make sure we didn't, we don't have a burr. Uh, maybe a little burr on this side of the blade, so I'm going to go back at that uh, just um, to clean that up. This side feels good for some reason. And then uh, next we're going to take two of these stones and just try and touch like this. So I'm going to do both of those things right now. And finally, we're looking for those wild teeth. So that's it. Um, it only has to happen when you put the blade on the saw. Um, and uh, I can see, I know I didn't show you before what the fit was in between the guides, but I can see by pushing on the blade here, they have a little bit more room in the guides than I had it when I first set it up, so it's shaking a little bit. I'll take the opportunity to um, loosen the guide and, and um, close that gap a little bit. It's really amazing how well a saw can work if everything is right. If it's running, if it's running well and uh, the blade is in good condition. And these little cuts that we're taking on it really help the saw to do its best work. So, <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs>